So this idea of the eternal <laughs> chip, that idea of the eternal chip isn't so removed. Not really, little, no. Yeah, and right. so that in a, in a non-trivial sense, an organism is a kind of technology, a kind of techne, a kind of way of life, um, and that we belong, I belong, you belong to a, a set of cultures that regularly think of um, systems of production and reproduction and energetics and information and, and, and re regularly think of almost anything describable as a technology, most certainly including ourselves. And that idiom is an important, powerful idiom among us, but it's also a very parochial one. Um, but not necessarily parochial in the bad sense. Um, that we tend to think of it as um, easily, tra that it would easily travel, but of course it doesn't as a descriptive practice. Yeah. Um, all along your talk, I have the feeling, you know, along with genetic explosion of the past year, or exactly. things that we have known for the past 10 years, such as genetics was only going with physics once in the beginning of the century, just became a mere fact of everyday life. Exactly. Uh, just made, made you realize almost physically that our subjectivity imploded that we are not ourselves, that the species may be ourselves, or that the full notion Or that we're not, who, we're, not, we're not who we thought we were, which is not quite the same the thing as not being ourselves. No, the whole notion of self has exploded. It's mutating. Yeah, so the other species are also ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. It's also, it was also interesting that President Clinton made a, an anti-racist, used the opportunity of the genome to make an anti-racist uh, remark. We could say, that the thing that would differentiate one race from another, but essentially it's not that different that would differentiate me from a rat. For instance, that would be a very racist remark. Using the yeah, same he, could have, he absolutely could have done it that way. Yeah, yeah. It's quite deliberate so, not to do it that uh, way. Uh, and I, am, and uh, I understand the consequences of this full explosion, implosion, simultaneous of what our subjectivity is, of who we are, uh, meaning of this enhanced family of the cyber, the machine and the machine being in space between us and the other species, and we all together being me somehow. Somehow. Has mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, right. extraordinary implications, as you said, in the thing of nature and culture and the thing of freedom itself. A big part of the, the whole thinking around freedom swept away to a certain extent, or certain seems to be swept away. But all along your detailing, you're identified as one clear corporate evil. And the, the whole political orientation of the research and the, and the structure of the joking, of the humor, uh, has a very clear political direction, to which I clearly agree. But <laughs> how, how can all this, ex because by nature, by the nature of the ideology that lets us think of a new subjectivity, we may think, well, it's just new and different. Let's but think, but let's it's not, think about it's it. not it's merely new, yeah, <laughs> as, I know, as I know, you're pointing out. It's not necessarily yeah. uh -huh. good or bad or anything. It just has no moral uh, attachment whatsoever. In, but in fact, what makes it happen has a lot of, as we know them today, uh, quite negative moral or ethic Absolutely. attachments to it, which you're pointing out. Yeah. So we're in a contradiction here. Well, not exactly. Or, it's or a no, the contradiction is such a strong war. We're in a, we're in a dilemma, for sure. But so I'm... I'm you know, I want you to elaborate on that because I can't. Well, I can elaborate, which is not the same thing as getting any further. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a hard, a hard set of issues because I have a, part of the way I work is out of a barely controlled anger. Uh, <laughs> and it is. I want which we're almost friends. We were in the meet under the chair. That's a real Catholic girl. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Maybe, maybe oh, not. <laughs> it's an overdetermined reading, I grant you. But, uh, but, but, but wait a minute. The, the dilemma is actually rather similar to that that I um, ended up having to think about in the Cyborg Manifesto. That is to say, there is no way out of the knowledge that the cyborg is a weapons project. And it's about the production of the achievement of man as an enhanced weapons system, uh, as space explorer, as a Cold War project. That that is the cyborg, uh, but turns out um, that, that the illegitimate offspring are perhaps more abundant than the legitimate ones. That the that nothing is nothing but, and that even in the belly of the monster, one finds a great deal more thank you than the fantasies of totalitarianism. 
And the fantasy of closed domination is just that, a fantasy, which is not to say that systems of exploitation and um, a profound injustice, murderous injustice, are built into contemporary genetics research, for example, uh, as in uh, weapons research and much else. That the perpetuation, indeed, of new forms of inequality and exploitation, as well as old ones, are built into these practices. True, to be identified, to be struggled against, to be named, to be fought, to be, make mistakes over. But what, what I think I'm you know, relentlessly committed to doing is pointing out that closing the door and saying that that is what it is, is a, is a deathly fantasy. I made a joke in um, Modest Witness that was a, a triple integration from zero to infinity of all of nature commodified times the integration from zero to infinity of all of culture fully commodified <coughs> times time from 1945 to omega, the time of techno-scientific sacramental fulfillment okay, in a final apocalypse of extinction, equals the closed and breathless space, the evacuated chamber of the New, New World Order, Inc. And I gave a kind of pseudo-psychoanalytic analysis of that mathematical joke as a neurotic symptom, a fantasy, a, par a paralyzing fantasy of the world as hell, or the world as the nothing world. but domination. That's why the war chamber appears. Yeah, and it's the left's biggest sin. It's the left's biggest neurotic tick. Uh, the fantasy of domination everywhere you look. All, you know, water, water everywhere, not a drop to, you know, domination, domination everywhere, not a place to move. Yeah. <laughs> Defeated before you start, you know. Whereas it seems to me a rather more fruitful way to locate ourselves as political people is a little bit like my friend Katie King uh, argues for lesbian feminist writing practices in science fiction, more than you thought and less than there should be. Uh, that in, in all of these practices, there's always more creativity and places to enhance, places to move where we need to be and less than there should be. Um, so that in naming violation, we have to be really careful not to reproduce the, the neurotic tick of the triple integration uh, toward apocalypse, the endangered species discourse of the fathers, you know. And that's not easy to do in a barely secularized uh, uh, Christian salvation narrative because it is so oriented toward apocalyptic discourse and particularly in North American culture and within that particularly in United Statesian culture, the line between crisis and apocalypse is a very thin one. <laughs> you, know? uh, you almost can't do crisis talk without falling into apocalypse talk, from the city on a hill of the Puritans right through to the hole in the ozone layer. Okay, ozone layer, the apocalypse, and somebody We're fine. has another question, or we would just thank her for the job. Very well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>